Welcome to Skill Builder. I'm Robin Clevett. I'm at the Capel Build and I'm just about to embark on putting the guttering up on the uh, garden room. So the garden room, as you might have seen before in previous episodes, is quite a large structure with a quite a big roof area, but it's covered with trees. I didn't give the guttering a lot of thought at the time, but I thought, will I be using plastic? And I thought, no, because it's probably going to fill up with leaves. It's just going to bend and fall down. So then I started searching out something which would play compliments to the fact that this is the first glass and steel house in the UK. So so um, I found Lindab. Now Lindab make a galvanized steel gutter. It's called Majestic. It's a really nice product. It comes in various sizes and it can cope with pretty much any amount of rainfall providing you've got the space on the fascias to take it. This is the product I'm going to be using. It's called Majestic. It's 125 mil in section size and the downpipes are 87 mil. We've got some really nice components that are manufactured by Lindab. They've got a massive amount of experience in um, making sheet metal products. The company was started in 1957, which incidentally was the year that the glass house was built. So there's quite a nice link there. Being that it was a glass and steel house, I was really pleased to be using galvanized steel. So immediately you think, will steel and rust, but the company has developed coatings and the galvanization process to actually outlast copper and zinc. This has got a life expectancy of 70 years. So with the correct in installation, this should, well, it's gonna outlast me. In fact, it probably outlast a lot of us uh, watching this video. So I'm gonna get on now and I'm gonna take you through the installation, which is really simple, no mastic needed. So the first part of a guttering job is obviously setting it out. You need to work out where your outlets are going to be going for your drains, example, um, you need to be putting your guttering brackets up and that sort of stuff. So Lindab recommend a fall of one in 300, which is fairly simple with their product. The gutter lengths are three meters. So that's basically 10 millimeters for every drop. So what I've done here, I've got 13.5 meters of gutter on the back elevation. I'm going to split that in two and have it in the middle. So it's roughly six and a half meters. So I'll be dropping about 25, 30 mil from end to center, end to center. On the other elevation, it's 10 meters long, but I'm gonna do that all in one go. So I'll be using nine and a bit lengths, which is roughly 35 mil. I've got a fascia board, which is sort of 200 mil. So I've got plenty of scope using the heavy duty bracket, which is really heavy duty. I mean, you're not gonna bend that. And I talked about the leaves and the weight and everything else. I've got no worries about that. The brackets are spaced at 800 mil centers. So if you do plastic guttering, you used to putting them up with the old money was three feet or 900. So these are a little bit closer together. So it's just a real belt and braces job. We're also gonna be cutting the guttering with a hacksaw. So as you might be saying, well, why aren't you gonna be cutting it with an electric grinder, for example? There's a problem with that. When you cut with a grinder, it heats up the coating and also um, it forms a problem with the f in the future with the galvanization process. So it's basically the heat, which is not gonna be doing you any favors. You might get some rust. I've done a few test cuts. It's really, really easy to cut. Once you've got the hang of it, just a normal hacksaw. This is my rod, basically a bit of roofing batten. I've marked on it the length of the gutter here. I've also marked on it all my um, brackets. So I've come in my 100 and about 120 mil allowing for my verge. And then I'm going 800 mil centers all the way through here. It's really handy this because obviously this is a bracket there B and I can see the relationship between the end of the gutter and that bracket. And it's really nice because the next one is going to be there and the union is virtually right in the middle of those brackets. That sets my fall. Now we'll put a line all the way up this fascia. Bit of chalk, not too much. Don't want to leave a big stain on there, although you won't see it, it's behind guttering. So I'm not trying to hold a tape measure and it's flapping around. I've got my marks on this rod. Simple stuff. Just going along my chalk line, adding my brackets. Really nice, simple stuff. I've only waited six months to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
we leave a small expansion gap between the gutters. Approximately five to eight mil, I would say. So with a lot of metal gutters, sometimes they lay in like a male and female, and you might put a, a bolt through in the case of cast iron with a bituminized sort of sealant, which is non-setting, but it basically helps with expansion, contraction and movement. Lindab have developed a really nice union. It's really simple, clips in and you fold it round and it's rubbered, so, um, and it's really quite thin, so there's not a lot of uh, size to it. It's 100 mil, that one. Mm. Just pull it in, pull that off there, work your way along the gutter. Really simple. So we've got a stop end, which again, is fully gasketed, it's just a knock-on stop end. It's got a rubber gasket, which is set in there, and basically it's universal, so whether that's the front, so it's a left, or a right on this side, basically it just pushes in carefully and taps it on. So I mean, it's just a matter of being nice and gentle, getting the seam of the gutter into there, or the bottom of the gutter into there, and just making sure that allocates with your front nose in, and just give it a good tap on. And there we have it. This is the Union. It's really nice, really flat in profile. It works itself by clipping it at the back, anchoring it on the ball nose at the top, and then pressing around this tab to hold it. So it's a really lovely little bit of engineering that. It's just absolutely beautiful. Good gasket in there as well. And you can sort of see that that represents your expansion sort of area. So you want to be somewhere in there. Lock it in. There's a little V on the back, which is quite handy because you can just see that's the center. Pull around this little latch at the front. I mean, is that the easiest union you've ever seen? It's 1410. I'm going to allow 10 mil for my expansions. So it's 1400. I'll go and cut that now. But all I'm doing is I'm using the end of this to keep it square. I haven't got to try and mark it all the way around. So here we go. going to mark the outlet now. Unlike others where you might have a union either side of a purpose-made outlet, this is uh, not dissimilar to a lot of other metal gutter products. You basically form that yourself in the bottom of the gutter. So, simple. There's our position. Slot that in there underneath the ball nose. Bring that around, clip it on. Like this. Don't fold that back at this stage. And what we need to do with a pencil is mark a faint line around this. Some people put a hole cutter through it, but again, when you're using a hole cutter, sometimes the heat might affect the galvanization and the um, coating on this, which is obviously gonna be what protects it from rusting in the future. We're gonna cut a simple V just to get started. This will be a rounded cut because I want to get it with a snips all the way around. And I'm just going to follow that profile. So I'm just putting the down pipes up. So there's a various um, different types of clips. There's vandal proof clips and, and all sorts, but these are the ones I'm using, which are not dissimilar to a plastic one. Two fixing points. These clips, incidentally, they secure really nicely. So unlike a plastic one where you kind of screw in the gutter pipes in place, you've got the beauty of putting all of these in before you even have to start thinking about cutting the pipe. So you can plumb everything up, you can set all your pipe clips in, and they're nice because you can actually clamp a section of pipe in to mark it in situ and take it out very simply. And this is the way they do it. It's like a dovetail. And when you clamp the pipe in, like so, that simply drops over the top and clamps it. Just knock it up nice and tight. Rubber mallet them out as well. At the bottom, 
we have the leaf trap or the leaf chute. So the water passes all the way through and then all the leaves are deflected straight the way out. So this is one line of defence. The second line of defence is a leaf guard which we're going to um, incorporate at a later stage. So that goes straight into the underground drainage and this is really neat. The way that you configure this, you have an adapter which basically pops in the top of there and that shoe or that collar is long so when the downpipe goes in and it's fixed it enables you to remove to lift slide this up and remove this to rod your drains out so you don't have to have a separate you know rodding access or anything like that it's really neat so you the, the pipe stays in situ and everything else is telescopic effectively slides up and down so i like that as well as another good feature again really well thought through there's a seam at the back you want it at the back really so it doesn't so it goes in the little groove on the brackets and then it's a really nice tight fit and they slide on really easily so i'm back on the bench i've got one little last component to knock up so I did have these um, really nice hoppers which I was hoping to use except the position of them by the time I add on the two bends just made it a little bit too long for its application but what's really nice is I'm making a small hopper using a running outlet, two of their stop ends, two of the Lindab stop ends and a small piece of gutter so I'm actually making my own hopper and in fact, it looks the absolute business because it's almost, um, it's something that you don't often see, a 300 millimetre long piece of gutter, two stop ends and an outlet, and two of these beautiful cast brackets. I mean, they're really, really strong. You know, the reason why they're so strong, if you think about it, is, you know, some of the countries or a lot of the countries that are using this sort of product um, all the time, metal gutter in, they get a lot of snow. So it's incredibly important that that snow is calculated for. Obviously these are small gutters and they suit our application because we're just really looking at rain and we're looking at a little bit of snow, but you know, in, in the southeast of England, it's not such a problem. But yeah, so this is another thing that they specialize in obviously is the strength because I'm fixing them to virtually directly back to a barge board. I'm going to be taking off the lug, which is at the rear. And that again is a simple operation. It can just be bent off and the same on the other side. So now I effectively have a left and a right. So first of all, let's cut some guttering on a nice square end, that's good. So what we'll do is we'll use a one of their ends because they're far, far squarer than mine. I'll just check it for square. Oh, it's perfect. And there you have it, you have a lovely flat end. So my hopper is gonna have the ends. First of all, we want the running outlet cut in it. Quick mark of the outline. It's like can opener, the old fashioned ones. It's like a twist and a little turn as you go. And then it's all lovely then. The object is now, is pop our outlet on to hold it nice and firm. Now I'm gonna turn this clip right round now, secure it in place. And then the stop ends. And there is our little hopper. So we made our own smaller hopper. And it just does our job perfectly. And we'll put that up outside so you can see. And we've done that with just enough space to get the bracket in. Oh, here we go. And all that's going to come off there is two offsets and that's going to deliver the rainwater from a roof gutter which is actually formed in the roof down to a nice eave or the lower level of gutter. So Roger's turned up, he was really kind to give me a little hand with like the rest the of the... cavalry, I waited round the corner till you're nearly finished. I know. I'll tell you the truth Robin, I was looking at you and I was thinking you look like you're enjoying yourself there. Yeah I was, I mean I actually, um, I do actually enjoy doing things like guttering and that sort of stuff because it's a little bit out of the norm for me but get the fundamentals right, 
get your falls right, follow the instructions, and um, especially when you're working with a bloody good product like this. There you go, Roger. Well, do you know what, mate? I, I, look, the, the spot the deliberate. How's the water get through there? <laughs> um, but anyway, no, I, I mean, this is, you know, I've put up miles and miles of plastic gutter and it's just like, it's all right, click, yeah. click, click, and it creak, creak and whatever. But but this stuff, it's, it feels a little bit like engineering, doesn't it? It feels like you're, and it's, and, like, and it's beautiful. It is, I mean, this is gonna patina, by the way. This is the Majestic, as I said before, but it's gonna patina. Ooh, is it? So yeah, this is gonna dull down in time, just like the timber cladding that I'm using, that's gonna silver off. Just like some of this timber work, wow. it's going to silver off. You're going off. to be able to see this from space then. Yeah, but it's going to silver off. Exactly. But when you look at that, to me, that's really nice. I'm a bit of a purist. I've got timber and now I've got galvanised steel and it just looks amazing. You've got to admit that. If you had that was plastic yeah. guttering up there, it no, just wouldn't do it for me. I'm inspired by it. It stirs the poet in me. You know, all quotations, or most quotations, they say are either from Oscar Wilde, Mark Twain, Shakespeare or Winston Churchill. So you want a gutter-related quotation okay yeah. Oscar Wilde all right Oscar Wilde we are all of us in the gutter but some of us are gazing at the stars so we're all of us in the Lindab gutter oh, but yeah. some of them are gazing at the stars trust, I like it trust, Roger. trust me to get that quotation like wrong right, that's the like bit it. he missed out I like it that's why I ended up well, in Reading Jail. thanks again mate for popping by give me a hand I really Slap appreciate it. it and I hope you have many happy years of do you know what it's like? Do you know when you get wally boots when you're a kid and you can't wait for it to rain? Yeah. I feel like that with this. I do, actually. When it rains, I'm going to come and have a walk around the building. So thanks very much for joining us on our little um, guttering adventure here. And if you want to sort of see more about this particular product, there'll be a link down here somewhere, and you'll be able to click on that, and you can find out a lot more about it. So thanks very much again, Roger. Oh, don't forget to subscribe, by the way. We That's still it. need subscribers. We still got to hit that 100,000 mark by the end of the year. That'd be fantastic. So remember, hit the button, subscribe, check the bell for your alerts and become a skill builder follower.